today I have the privilege of speaking with John Cash from UR Energy. How are you today, John? Hey, doing great, Tracy. It's good to catch up with you again. And I'd just like to start by congratulating you with your ongoing milestones and achievements. How about we start with an update on Lost Creek? Okay, yeah, no, that sounds good, Tracy. We have a lot going on right now at the mine site. Uh, it's spring in the Rockies. We're finally beginning to get some good weather out there, and the guys really appreciate that in the field. But, um, but we announced last year that we would be doing uh, some construction and drilling to be able to put ourselves in a position where we could ramp up very quickly when market conditions allow. And so uh, the drilling program has really uh, kind of come to its end. We have uh, all of the wells installed now in our next header house, header house 2-4. Uh, so that's all done. Those wells are being tested right now to make sure that they will pass their mechanical integrity test. And we're having good success there. And backfilling mud pits, leveling out the ground. So all of that work is ongoing uh, with the, uh, the wells. Uh, switching over to construction, uh, we are continuing to construct the next header house, 2-4. Uh, that's going to take us a few more weeks, take us into this summer uh, to complete that. Uh, I should comment that uh, with regard to supplies of material for drilling and for construction, uh, that is a big concern, not just in our industry, but uh, in every mining commodity you can imagine. And we have been ahead of the game in that regard. Uh, we have everything we need uh, to finish out Header House 2-4. We also have everything ordered or on the ground for Header House 2-5. And even for the next Header House 2-6, our engineers have got a long list of parts and materials that they need. They also know the cost and they also know the lead time on each of those items. And so anything that's going to take more than a year to get or around a year, uh, they've already got it ordered and it's on its way. And we implemented that program some time ago uh, because we are seeing that some materials are taking a very long time to get in. And we want to make sure we stay well ahead of the game there so we don't run into any roadblocks in the future. Uh, but the delays we are seeing are really on the electrical equipment like motor control centers and transformers. Those can be nearly a year out if you want new equipment. And also flow monitoring equipment can, can uh, be a long ways out. So we have everything we need to order uh, that if we pull the trigger today and we say we want to ramp up to a million pound a year run rate, we believe we can get there in six to eight months without interference from uh, the supply chain. So that's where we're at at Lost Creek, uh, ready to ramp up that property very quickly and uh, looking forward to signing contracts to enable us to be able to do that. And of course, for those of you out there very interested in your investment portfolio, uh, having the ESG criteria met and the sustainability criteria met. Can you talk to that to our investors and our investor audience out there about those topics and how UR Energy qualifies with those criteria? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we believe we're on the cutting edge of green energy. And uh, I know a lot of people say that, but uh, as a provider of uranium, a nuclear fuel, we believe we are truly at the, uh, the tip of the spear with regard to that because uranium, of course, we sell it to U.S. utilities. It produces carbon-free energy, uh, good base load, low-cost, reliable energy. Um, and I, I'm not going to badmouth renewables. They're fantastic, but they do have their limitations. We have to recognize that. And uh, we believe that nuclear really needs to be an important part of the uh, the carbon-free story going forward. Uh, but one of the things that's interesting, a little statistic, if you take a look at the uranium in the ground, the resource at Lost Creek and our Shirley Basin property, and you mine that and you produce energy from that, you compare that energy, that carbon-free energy produced from that compared to the same energy produced from coal-fired power, and we're gonna offset more than 300 million metric tons of CO2 from that production. That's a massive amount uh, in anybody's book. And that's really the equivalent of taking more than 67 million cars off the road for a year. Uh, can you imagine that? 67 million cars, the emissions for one year. And we're gonna take that off the road uh, through production at Shirley Basin and at uh, Lost Creek. So our employees are very proud of that. 
Um, and uh, you know, it's an important part of our story. It's an important part of ESG investment that's really beginning to gain uh, you know, traction throughout the US. But we're not gonna rest there. We're not just gonna say, hey, we're producing green fuel, but we're taking other active steps uh, to be able to reduce our footprint. Uh, here in just about two weeks now, we're excited. We're gonna move into a new office here in Casper. You may notice behind me that my shelves are pretty empty. That's because we've been moving over. Uh, but the objective of the new office is to be able to keep a number of our employees in town so that they don't have to drive out to the mine site every day. It's a long ways out, it's very remote, and we'd like to keep as many of our employees in town as possible, uh, reduce our emissions that way, uh, improve our safety for our employees, uh, because it is a long, lonely road out to the site, and just overall have a, a smaller footprint. And we're going to, be, going to be building out in conjunction with that new office, a manufacturing site, so we can manufacture our header houses, uh, certain pipelines, meter runs uh, here in town, again, with the objective of keeping as many employees in town as we possibly can. We'll also ultimately put our laboratory in town for both Lost Creek and for Shirley Basin. Again, the objective is keep the people in town to the maximum extent possible. Uh, it'll improve their quali quality of life uh, as well. So we have that ongoing. And then we also have some research and development projects ongoing. Uh, the, the goal there is, is really twofold. Uh, number one, reduce our footprint, but number two, do it in a way that reduces our cost of production as well. And very frequently, those two things come hand in hand. They're not diametrically opposed to each other. They're very frequently aligned with each other. So one of the projects we have ongoing uh, is to find a new way to case wells and to install wells uh, drilling uh, that will reduce our drill rig time. And we believe we found it actually a very good way to do that. Uh, we're confident enough in this that we've actually gone out and gotten a provisional patent uh, a couple of months ago. So that's in place now. And we have applied for permission from the regulators to be able to go out and test the methodology. Uh, we've been notified that they intend to approve that uh, on a test basis so we can prove out the technology. And I'm literally waiting uh, to get approval via email to, to be able to go out and do that. And we're expecting approval literally within days now uh, to be able to test that in the field. We have all of the parts, all of the equipment, we've got the drill rig ready to go to test it. And uh, we believe that if we can prove this out, and I will emphasize the if, because uh, this is a, a, a challenging uh, project, research and development project, and the outcome is not certain. But we believe if we can prove this out in the field, that we will reduce our drill rig time for injection wells by 70%. Uh, that's 70% less noise, 70% fewer emissions, uh, dramatically smaller mud pits and surface disturbance related with that, less material consumed, less cement, less casing, and so we're excited to be able to get out, prove that out, and be able to implement that going forward. Uh, good ESG, great way to reduce our footprint going forward. And the other thing we're working on very diligently is to reduce our water consumption. Uh, the, our industry has been criticized in the past for its water consumption. Uh, that's probably a bit unfair, but nonetheless, we do consume water. And I think it's incumbent upon everybody to look for ways to reduce water consumption, especially in the Mountain West, uh, where we have limited water supplies. So we've already made great strides in reducing water consumption. Uh, what we do is we take our wastewater, we use reverse osmosis and other treatment methods to essentially return that water that is naturally contaminated with uranium and other radionuclides. We clean that up out of the water, produce what is essentially potable water, and we inject that back into a shallow aquifer so that ranchers can use that uh, in the future instead of wasting that water. And we are looking right now at additional ways to increase that treatment uh, so we can further reduce that volume of water. And uh, our ultimate goal is to recycle 99.8% of the water that comes through our processing plant. And we've made great strides. We have a little ways to go further on that. And we're hoping by the end of this year, uh, maybe early next calendar year, we'll be able to make some announcements on that. But we do have on-site engineering and testing uh, going on uh, there as well. So yeah, ESG is not just something that we wave our arms about and talk about. 
uh, we're trying to make that demonstration uh, on the ground that, hey, we're, we're, uh, we're coming to the table. Uh, it's important to the company. It's important to our investors. So uh, a lot going on in that front for, for us, Tracy. Well, John, thank you so much for the update today. For more information on one of only two American-based uranium producers, please go to ur-energy.com. Thank you, John. All right. Thank you, Tracy.